In 1980, three men from New York who were adopted as babies met each other and discovered they were triplets. But their search behind why they were separated at birth unearthed an outlandish and menacing conundrum. Hello, wonderful people. I'm Scott Leffler for Wonderbot, and here is these identical triplets were separated at birth, and that's not the strangest part. Before we begin, make sure to smash that like button, subscribe to our channel, and click the notification bell for more amazing videos. The year was 1980, and it was Robert Schaffron's first day at Sullivan County Community College. But strangers kept waving at him and calling him Eddie. Girls would walk up to him and kiss him too, which left him puzzled. Then a friend asked him if he was adopted, which opened up a doorway to a bigger mystery. Schaffron was 19 years old when he learned he had a twin brother named Edward Galland. The two of them had been adopted from the Louise Wise Adoption Agency in New York. On September 16, 1980, Schaffron went to Gallen's house to meet for the first time. Schaffron told Megan Kelly on Today about their first meeting. We had the same physical reaction. We hugged and kissed. The twins had no idea that they had another identical brother out there. But when David Kelman saw the brothers' reunion in the New York Post, he immediately noticed he bared a striking resemblance to them. So he started looking into the hospital he was born in, and that's when he knew he was their third brother. Schaffron told the Huffington Post, once we got together, there was a joy that I'd never experienced in my life, and it lasted a really long time. The circle was complete, and once everyone heard their story, they were hooked. In the 1980s, the media had a field day with the brothers' reunion. They even appeared on the Phil Donahue show and talked about their similar mannerisms and interests despite being raised in different cities and households. Kelman's aunt by adoption told the Huffington Post about what it was like when the three boys were finally in the same room together. It was a miracle, she gushed. But the question remained what had led to their separation. In a 1980 article in the New York Times, Kelman's adoptive mother, Claire, explained her disbelief at how similar the boys turned out to be despite being raised in different households. They talk the same, they laugh the same, they hold their cigarettes the same. It's uncanny. Although they were all adopted by Jewish families, the adoptive families had no idea that the boys were originally triplets. This led to director Tim Wardle turning their story into a documentary called Three Identical Strangers, which delved into the dark secret behind their separation. The documentary goes on to show how the young men were blessed with curly hair, gorgeous smiles, and good looks, something the media ate up completely from day one. They even caught the attention of a certain 1980s pop star, which was a dream come true. The triplets appeared in Madonna's 1985 film Desperately Seeking Susan. It was a brief cameo, but the boys were seen wearing nice duds and leaning against a wall outside with smiles on their faces as the singer walked past them. But Wardle's investigation into the story revealed a doctor's sinister motives that led to the shocking separation, and his intentions were somewhat similar to Nazi doctor Joseph Mengel's nature versus nurture experiments with twins. The documentary explained that the triplets, along with other multiples, were separated shortly after birth and placed in different homes. Then the unknowing participants were studied by a child psychiatrist named Dr. Peter Neubauer. The results of the long-term study that examined nature versus nurture wasn't published, and the case study materials were kept at Yale University under seal. But that didn't stop the director or the producer of the film from getting to them. They were driven by the injustice on behalf of their brothers, explained Wardle. The documentary's producer, Becky Reed, also spent nine months attempting to access the files and footage from their case study, but it was a complicated case. The brothers finally received almost 11,000 pages worth of information that hadn't been looked at in years. But sadly, the material wasn't shown in the documentary because they were acquired after the film was completed. Wardle and Reed were never able to discover the names of everyone who had financially contributed to the Shady Project. But they learned that the Manhattan's Child Development Center, which merged with the Jewish Board of Family and Children's Services, had been the prime financial benefactors. The National Institute of Mental Health also contributed funds. The triplets had been part of a secret experiment and were completely unaware of it until years later. The documentary team also learned that the project's researchers had visited the Gallard, Kelman, and Schaffron families posing as a child development study group. Their childhood and personalities have been recorded and charted. So was their relationship with their adoptive families. But these insidious researchers never told the triplets or their parents what they were really doing or that these boys had nearby siblings they'd never met before. 
Sadly, the triplets weren't the only test subjects in this human experiment. The documentary's team investigation uncovered that there were about a dozen pairs of identical twins who had been separated at the Louise Wise Agency for the same devious purpose. Nearly 20 years later, the two remaining triplets still have nothing but resentment for those who separated them from their siblings. Shafrin, who lives in Brooklyn and entered law practice, told the Orlando Sentinel, How can you do this with little children? How can you do this to a little baby? Innocent children being torn apart at birth. When word got out over what had happened, adoption agency directors voiced their distaste of the experiment. I feel it's a terribly destructive thing to do to separate siblings, said Florence Anna Fisher, the director of the Adoptees Liberty Movement Association, a New York City advocacy group for adoptees. Fisher was also quoted saying, I think it's criminal to separate twins and triplets because they're attached in perpetuity. It's like chopping off a limb. But Neubauer, the psychoanalyst who conducted the experiment, claimed they were not separated for research purposes. He added that the Louise Wise Services policy would have ensured they were separated anyway. The Louise Wise Services acted on the suggestion of psychiatrist Dr. Viola Bernard, too, because she believed that triplets who grow up separately would be able to develop their own unique identities. But thankfully, a law passed in 1980 that no longer allows twins to be separated at birth. The documentary about the brothers isn't the only story of multiples being reunited after growing apart. Elise Shine and Paula Bernstein were also chosen to take part in the same study as the triplets when they were infants. Elise Shine and Paula Bernstein wrote about the details of their lives in a 2007 memoir. They were first reunited in 2004 when they were both 35 years old, and even then it was undeniable that they were closely related. Imagine a slightly different version of you walks across the room looks you in the eye and says hello in your voice they wrote the book looking at this person you're able to gaze into your own eyes and see yourself from the outside the identical individual has the exact same dna and is essentially your clone we don't have to imagine elise and paula shared so many aspects of their life unknowingly they were both editors of their high school newspaper and both women studied film at university the sisters now both live in brooklyn new york and are both writers